Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to the NI Massive Tutorials from ProducerTech's Synth Courses. In these lessons, I'm going to guide you through using this powerful synth so you can learn how each control works and how you can use the instrument to create your own awesome sounds. To ensure you make the most from the course, you should make sure you've downloaded the course pack containing all the example Massive presets, written notes, and accompanying Loop Masters files. Also remember that at any point you can contact me with questions by emailing rob at synthcourses.com or by going to the Producer Tech forum. This lesson is going to give you an overview of the synth, describing what each section is for and roughly how it works. Plus we'll be looking at how sounds are stored and can be located using the attributes and browser view modes. Massive uses subtractive and wavetable synthesis to create sounds. A subtractive synth combines different oscillators and noise generators, which all produce various waveforms, and then takes this combined sound and runs it through filters, which then sculpt and shape the sound. It's this reduction or subtraction of frequencies that gives the synthesis its name. The wavetable part comes from the oscillator section, which doesn't just generate simple waveforms, but uses wavetables instead. Then, this filtered sound can be run through different effects before going to the instrument output, as well as undergoing modulation, which is the automatic changing of synth parameters over time. We'll be learning about each of these things as we work through the course, so don't worry if it all sounds confusing at the moment. For now, I'm going to introduce you to the GUI and show you how it's laid out. At the top of the synth is the navigation bar. Here, you can see the currently loaded sound and some controls for switching to other sounds or saving the current settings. Then, on the right, you have the three view mode switches. The first one, Synth View, allows you to see the current synth settings below. So, if I click on the sound name at the top here and then select a different sound from the factory list, you can see the settings change when each sound loads up. To give you a quick guide to the GUI, on the left side here, we have the three oscillators and noise generator. These are the sound producing sections, which can be used to create all sorts of different waveforms. Then you have the modulation oscillator, which doesn't produce sound, but can be used to change the sound of one or more of the oscillators, and also a section for adding a feedback loop into the sound signal path for making it more raucous. Next you have the two filters at the top here, which is where the outputs of the various sound generators go next, to be shaped in certain ways by having their bass, treble or other frequencies removed, or to have colour applied by the more distinctive and original filter types. Then the sound passes on to the amp and output effects section. This is where you set the level and panning, and apply the global effects and EQ if you like. And lastly, there are two insert effects at the bottom that can be added to the sound at various points, selectable via the routing section on the main display. So this shows you what I've just described. You've got the sound generators, going into the filters, then the amp and effects, before you go to the master output, the level of which is controlled using the dial in the top corner, and also the insert effects that can be added to the sound at one of a number of different places, as you like. The central display also features the other general pages, selected with the tabs at the top which are pages of less common parameters for each sound. Then you've got the eight modulator displays selected using the buttons below where you can set the parameters of the various envelopes and LFOs or the performer and stepper for creating even more customized modulation. Finally, in the bottom corner, you have the macro control section where you choose how the eight macro controls are mapped and what they're called. And also some other controls for setting up velocity aftertouch and other types of performance modulation. These macro controls are eight dials that are assigned in all of the factory sounds for instantly controlling some important synth parameters. If I select the attributes and browser view modes, you can see that these macros are shown across the top now. So if you like, you can stay on these modes initially to simply browse through the sounds on board and get used to the instrument before you delve into the synth view mode and start editing the instrument's parameters. 
in browser mode, which is where you locate any available sounds. The default mode is database view, where you can see the complete list of presets down the right side, from where they can be double-clicked to select. And then, on the left side, you have a table of attributes, where you can select different things to narrow down the list on the right. For example, you may want to locate an organ sound, or find a bass sound that is digital and distorted, after which you can see there are less to choose from. You may have noticed that this first list only allows one attribute to be selected, as these are the main categories of sound. However, the other lists allow any number of attributes to be selected to refine the search as much as you like. If you want to reset it, you just click the switch at the top here. Another way to locate massive sounds, or presets as they're also called, is just to type a name into the search box, and then use the cross alongside to delete it if you want to type in something new. Meanwhile, the sound switch can be used to activate file browser mode, where you can select a specific folder of massive sounds to look in. At the moment, the complete factory list is selected, but we could choose My Sounds to locate presets I've created, or My Favourites. To add sounds to this folder, you can just drag them to it from the factory list. Or, if in database mode, you can right-click with a PC or control click with a Mac and select the option from the context menu, which can similarly be used to remove the sound from the folder. Then, on the right side, you have the program list option. This is the list of presets, or programs as they're called on hardware synths, that you can create and use as the default list if you want, rather than using the factory list. To do this, just drag any sounds from the left, either using database or file browser modes into the list on the right. Once you've created this list, you can click the on symbol to activate it, after which you can use the up and down arrows on the navigation bar to load up the sounds in the list. Without the program list turned on, the up and down arrows just scroll through the factory sounds. This list can be edited by dragging around sounds or deleting them with the context menu once again. And, if you like, you can save the list using the switch at the top, after which you can choose a name for it. The main reason for doing this is so that you can then load the default list, which is empty, and then start from scratch making a new program list, as you can only have one loaded at any time. Attributes view is where you select the various characteristics that the sound has, enabling them to be found in browser view. As I choose different sounds, you can see the attributes changing, along with the metadata in the section to the right, which includes the patch creator and other useful information. This section will be looked at more when we start saving our own sounds later on. For now, I just want to switch back to synth view to show you some operational tricks. Firstly, the value of a dial is edited in exactly the same way as a fader, by clicking on the control and dragging up and down. There are no values listed around controls, so the synth has an analogue feel, and means you need to use your ears rather than just relying on numbers. A couple of things I want to make you aware of are firstly, the controls can be adjusted more finely by holding down the shift key, after which you can make much smaller changes to parameters. And secondly, if you double click a control, it resets it to its default position, which can be useful when editing sounds. Massive can be used in standalone mode or as a plugin within a DAW. If using it in standalone mode, you will need to set up the audio and MIDI configuration in the Massive window itself by choosing Audio and MIDI settings from the file menu on the navigation bar. The following window then allows you to choose an audio interface or sound card using the Audio tab. For best results, you should choose ASIO in the driver option if using a PC. Core audio is selected as default if using a Mac. And then select your interface or sound card if you have one connected. Then, in the MIDI tab section, you can see a list of all installed and connected MIDI controllers, so you can then make sure your keyboard or MIDI interface your keyboard is connected to is turned on. And if it's not, you can click off to turn it on. 
after which you can play the synth with its keys. That's the end of the first lesson on Massive. If you have any questions about anything so far, then give me a shout. Next time we're going to be starting our detailed exploration of the instrument by checking out the sound generating sections at the start. See you then.